I'm going to show you how to change the color of appearances that you apply to objects in your models in Fusion 360. You can change most of the stock textures in Fusion 360 to different colors. I will also show you how to modify the texture images and how to make a bump map so you can have a little bit more displacement in your renderings. To get started, I'm gonna create some spheres. I'll click Create, Sphere, click the ground plane, click and make a 100 millimeter sphere. I'm going to create another sphere on the ground plane, click 100 millimeters, and then I'll create one more sphere on the ground plane, and I'll click 100 millimeters. So now I have three spheres. Let's go ahead and apply some materials. If I press A on my keyboard, I can apply different materials. I'm gonna apply this polyurethane foam on the center sphere. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get some gemstone sapphire on this one. And then let's see, we'll go ahead and get some brushed metal. Type in brushed. And then I will drop on aluminum brushed radial. I have to download this one and I'll put it on here. So for this gemstone one, I can either double click and then I can simply adjust the color and it will change the color of the material. This is really nice. If I click on advanced, I can also change the color here, and then I can change the refraction, roughness, and different things like that. I can add a bump map. I wouldn't really want to do that with gemstone, and there are some advanced highlight controls where you can change these settings as well. But the main point is that you can change the color to have a gemstone color that would not be there normally. I can also duplicate these. So if I click duplicate, and then I want this one to be red or yellow, something that just isn't there, Notice that it doesn't affect this color, but I could drag it on this one. I'm going to undo that. Now let's look at this example. This is the brushed aluminum. And here I can also change the color. And this is great for simulating different materials. I can also double click on it and I can change the roughness to more or less, depending on how beat up I want the object to be or how shiny. So this is another great way to change materials. But what about this foam in the middle? If I double click on the foam and then I click advanced, notice that there are some images here. I do have the option of expanding this and clicking color, and then I can pick a color for the foam, but that just changes it to a color and keeps this bump map. What if I actually want to change the image color and the bump map? We can do that as well. So I'm gonna click this back to image and I'm gonna cancel and I'm actually going to duplicate this. I can label it new texture. I'll click on advanced and then I need to click on this image and then I can open up an image from my computer. So if I click here, I can load an image from my computer. What we need is a perfectly square image because if we open this material editor up down to the bottom and we click edit image, you'll notice that this is a square image. And so we can add in the source for this image and we want to make it square and then we can tell it how big it is and if we need to offset it as well as tell it if we want to tile it or not tile it. Most of the time you want to tile it, but in order to title, we need a seamless texture. Where do we get a new seamless texture? Well, one great place is the public domain. So if you go to an internet browser and you go to the New York Public Library Digital Collections, there are all kinds of images. I found this public domain image of a brick wall and I downloaded it. You can then open it up in a graphics program. For example, if you open it in Photoshop, I have it here. You'll notice on the edges, we have some sort of artifacts from the scanning process of this image. I'm going to use the marquee tool and I'm just gonna select inside the brick pattern. And then I'm going to go to the select menu and invert my selection. Then under edit, I can use content aware fill and Photoshop will use the interior of the image to create the exterior of the image. I'll click okay. Now we have two layers. So I'll highlight both these layers, right click, flatten image, and I'll double click so that lock goes away. Next, I wanna make sure I deselect and then go to filter, other, offset. Then I can change how I want this image to offset. You can offset it horizontal and vertical. This makes sure that the pixels on the edges are exactly the same. So I'll say, okay. 
but I still have where the texture doesn't look good. So I'll use the clone stamp tool and I'll sample some area. I'll paint a bit. Maybe I'll get some of this texture and repeat it here. Repeat some of that there. The key is that you want to have the textures going across that line because we can see this line a lot. So we just want to kind of erase that line. If you get too many of the same colors in the same spot, it won't look good. But if you do this, just take a little time. I think that repeats too much right there. So I'm going to erase that. That's looking better. And you can continue to fiddle with this. Even though this line here is natural to the photograph, it looks fake. So I'm just going to break that up a little bit. And now I have a seamless texture that repeats all the way around. I can save this as a JPEG. And then if I want to make a bump map, I can go ahead and just change this image to grayscale by going to image, mode, grayscale. I'll discard my color information. Now it's a grayscale image and I can edit the levels by going to adjustments, levels. Black in this image will be far recesses while bright white will be very bright. And then the gray will be a transition in between. So you can change how deep and creviced things are. So if I want to amp up the black and the contrast, this will be a much bumpier and more high contrasty lumpy surface rather than if I had more smooth transitions. You can play with this. Photoshop also has a bump map creator. So if you go to filter, 3D, generate bump map, but these features of Photoshop are being depreciated and soon will disappear. So it's better to use different tools to generate your bump maps. And for fusion, just changing it to grayscale will be great. And if you want to add color to your image, you can do that as well. This is a black and white image, but I'm going to use Photoshop's neural filters to add color to this. These are experimental filters. I can click colorize. It may need to download the filter and then it'll auto color this. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Add a little bit more magenta to that. And then I'll say, okay, for my texture. And then I will file, save this. Then back in Fusion, I can change these images out. So I can change the foam color to my brick texture here. And then I can change the bump map to my brick bump. So now I have this and I'll click apply. I can close this window. And now if I drag this onto my sphere, you can see that I have a seamless texture that goes around with a bump map. So this is three different ways that you can alter the default appearances in Fusion 360 to have better renders. So hopefully you can create seamless textures and make a bump map with grayscale for Fusion 360.